I'm determined to get Britain moving. I'm not interested in just talking about things, but actually in doing things. You control that debt really effectively. You were to say, right, let's give everyone a pay rise. I think that a lot of the corporations that you're talking about would say, well, we're not going to dent the profits. The agenda um, behind Brexit is wanting to diminish and get rid of the public broadpa broadcaster. Mm. Mm. Is, obviously in is it about wages? You know, is it about price caps? Where, where are you at? Good evening and welcome to a very special episode of The Table, a new discussion and debate show from Byline TV. Now tonight, we're going live for the first time. What could possibly go wrong? Yes, from now on, everything that goes on right here at this table will be streamed live. For those of you who haven't seen the show before, The Table is about having productive conversations about topics that matter with people we might not always agree with. But this isn't just any old talk show. At this table, there's no hiding behind sound bites. And we're gonna get deeper right into the heart of the issues. And we're gonna explore the philosophical and cultural underpinnings behind our positions. So joining me at this first ever live table tonight are Sam Bright, Chief Investigations Reporter at Byline Times, Campaigner and commentator Femi Olawole, Chair of Save British Farming and on the ballot for President of the Lib Dems, Liz Webster. And last, but by no means least, Talk TV host Christo Fufas. Now, tonight we're not just broadcasting live. After the show, you can join us for After Dark. That's our exclusive live Q&A for members. That's right. If you become a member of Byline TV+, Plus, you can join us right here after the show and put your questions and comments directly to this lot. So if you want to dig deeper into somebody's answer to a question uh, during the debate, or you just want to tell someone, or me as well, this applies to, that you think they're talking nonsense, go for it. Knock yourself out. This is your chance. Just go to byline.tv forward slash join and become a member. And you can join us for After Dark immediately after the show. And if you use the code, the table in caps, you can get your first month for just two pounds. So enough of that. Let's get into what we're really here to talk about. Liz Truss. She's been prime minister for just over a month. Does it feel longer? And in that time, things have not been going very smoothly at all. Last week's conference has been widely touted as a disaster, with members falling asleep during ministers' speeches, and then some members were thrown out of fringe events for hurling homophobic abuse at other members. And now, with the PM's personal approving rating, approval rating absolutely tanking, and the party dropping ever further in the polls, rumours of a mutiny by as many as 70 MPs are already circulating. So tonight, we are asking, is the Conservative Party finished for good? And just before we go to the panel, we're going to have a look at this quick clip because it sounds like Beth Rigby thinks that it might be. I thought I'd had a bad week the other day. I got a parking ticket and I stubbed my toe. Have a listen to this. Been in power for 28 days, but 10 of those politics was paused. In 18 days then, you announced £45 billion of tax cuts without setting a fiscal framework. It precipitated a 65 billion emergency bond buying program by the Bank of England to protect pension funds. The pound tanked. A thousand mortgage deals withdrawn from the markets as interest rate, rate rates expectations spiked. You established a 33-point lead for Labour in the polls. And now the lady not for turning has announced a massive U-turn on a policy. This is surely the worst start of any Prime Minister. Whew. Well, when you put it like that, Christo, is it the end for... I'm going to you first, <laughs> you because, <laughs> of course, it's um, your party. What do you think? Well, firstly, I'm more ideologically a Conservative than I am particularly a fan of the Conservatives for the last few years. Um, 
I thought that, that Boris Johnson, the Randy buffoon, as I call him, was, was an absolute dishonest disaster for the Conservatives. OK, these are the things that I think have gone right for Liz Truss. And there is... It, 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 I'm not going to stay silent now. Mm. Um, OK, I don't think she's got enough credit for actually doing what she said she would do when that was um, bring in an average cap for people's energy bills. She said she would do that when, uh, as one of her first acts as Prime Minister. She has done that. Stupidly, by her and her team, she's been overshadowed by some of the other complete mistakes that have been made. But I think credit where it's due, she said she would do something about that. Um, ideologically, I know more about where she stands. Again, she said she would lower taxes when she became Prime Minister. She has. I know more about where she stands ideologically and what she thinks about things in the three weeks she's been Prime Minister than I did in the three years of Boris Johnson being Prime Minister, whom had no ideology whatsoever. So I think on that note, she's done all right. I don't think her conference speech was as bad as people were making out. She wants growth. Who doesn't want that in an economy? She's not a great orator. Let's be honest. We had a great orator for three years, though, who actually said nothing whenever he would be entertaining while speaking. At least the substance of some of what she has said, I quite agree with. I think we should be focusing on growth. I think we should be a lower tax economy so that people keep more of their own money. The mistake that I think she made was by so foolishly doing this 45p tax rate and getting rid of the bankers' bonuses without going for the other end mm. and raising the tax threshold for the lowest paid. It is it is beyond belief to me that she didn't do that. Yeah. But those are a couple of the things that I think that, that, that she has done all right on. And ideologically, I prefer the direction she's going in than I did Boris Johnson. Pemmy. Yeah, so you say the thing about how she said she'd introduced the cap, sort of cap, um, and she did. It, it sounds very much like the, the line that the Tories often use of, well, can you imagine if we hadn't done anything or um, doing nothing would have been unconscionable. That's not the bar. The bar for the government, for a decent government, isn't just on the floor. They're supposed to do stuff. And what she did was was introduce the cap and the, IF, and the IFS says that, they, that it's, go, it's not... Got, it's going to create an unsustainable burden on the taxpayer for the future because they're not actually um, funding that with, you know, taxing the rich. Instead, they're cutting taxes for the rich. And, and, well, they tried to, and they basically crashed the pound. So she's done badly, badly on that. As far as ideology and having some sort of clear ideology, she does not. Everything she said in that speech was arguing against herself for about 20 minutes. She said how um, uh, we need to fund the, the areas of the country that are the furthest behind first in order to create a fairer country. And then literally... Three seconds later, said this for too long. We focused on redistribution of wealth. What? <laughs> I didn't say it was all. <laughs> Go on. And and she talks about how the left focuses on woke issues and political correctness. She said that her school was let down by a Labour council that was too focused on political correctness, while at the same time complaining about how when she was a kid that um, she, uh, her her brothers got given pilot toys while she was given an air hostess toy, which she said was unfair because she, she's a woman and very sexist, which she's correct in saying, but at the same time complaining about political correctness. It's completely confused. Okay, so I think broadly speaking, <laughs> Liz Truss aside, she's come in, she's created a lot of chaos in the markets, economically, um, and within the party. So let's get back to the original question. Does this spell the end for Conservatives or is this a Liz Truss blip? What do you think about that, Liz? Well, all through the leadership election, I've been saying that all roads lead to a minefield of chaos and ultimately an election. Because of what she was promising to do, it doesn't make sense and there is no real way of adding it up. So yes, people want to hear that they want to have, they want to pay less tax, but they also want to have good public services. Mm. So you can't have your cake and eat it. And this has been what we've had from the Conservatives for the last few years since the beginning. So people go, oh, I like the thought of paying less tax. And they go, but oh, I'm really cross because I can't get a doctor's appointment. So, you know, it is about educating the public about needing money, taxation, to be spent well and collected and to be fiscally responsible and to listen to, you know, mm. economists, OBR, and, and not to do crazy things. So when she had this agenda in the election, I said, 
for goodness sake, she either has a choice of blowing everything up and delivering what she says she's going to deliver, or she has a choice of then U-turning. Mm. And I thought, surely she'll U-turn, because who wants to go into mm. that fighting all of those fires? And But she's gone into pleasing the right of her party. And now she's in a hopeless situation because she's picked a, a big fight with the markets. And, and that's the reality. Time. Yeah, yeah. At, at, a, at a particularly difficult time for people. Sam, what do you think? Do you think... Um, and also, we've obviously got two years until they have to um, uh, call an election. Do you think Liz Truss is going to be here in six months? Do you think we're going to have to go through another leadership contest? Well, I think the context is really significant because if you think the position that Liz Truss came into power, um, she was following months and months of scandals from Boris Johnson's administration. It wasn't, it wasn't a seamless transition yeah. of power. Mm. So to then be a disruptor and to try and create chaos, just from, sheer, from the sheer politics of it, is daft. Because the, 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 the public's faith in the Conservatives was already at a low ebb. She needed to stabilise the party at that stage. I think, you know, Krista talks about her ideology as well. I agree that you can see her ideology more clearly than recent leaders. The problem is that the public simply doesn't like that ideology. So it's bad for her politically. I mean, the Social Attitude Survey came out a few weeks ago and showed that 58% of people identify as economically left-wing. They don't say themselves, I'm economically left-wing. They answer a series of questions that indicate they are economically left-wing. And so when trust comes along with sort of reheated Thatcherism, it's very clear to people that that's not what they want at this particular moment in time. Mm. And she, uh, she, I, I don't think it's permanent damage from the Conservative Party because the Conservative Party always finds a way. But I, I think she, as a, as a Prime Minister, is basically finished. And that's the interesting bit, I think, in all of this, is that the Conservatives have a reputation for being like vipers. Once they want a leader out, they go, don't they? they, they th that's true. They, they, they go for it, they attack, <laughs> divide and conquer. But I think that that would be a mistake. And in answer to your question, I think if they do steady the ship, I don't think that they are are finished. They had, I mean, it would be the most staggering turnaround if they lost the next election after winning such a majority. What a complete catastrophe for their their mm. leadership. And what a shame that with, for the first time in years, we had a government with a really clear majority and it, it seems to have, have, have gone completely uh, pear-shaped. Um, on the subject of taxation, we have the highest tax burden in history until recently on the British public. I don't think that that's right. I think that if you're talking about public services, and it's a totally fair point about public services, um, now steady yourselves before I say this. <laughs> take a deep breath. Femi, take a deep breath. Um, I don't think you can just blame the Conservative Party for the fact that people can't get a doctor's appointment, they can't get a hospital appointment, that they can't... Oh, yeah. Austerity. Yes, I, 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 well, that is one of the problems. And the reason that we... OK, now... I am, in general, ideologically pro-immigration, right? I absolutely understand that people who came to this country added value to the tune of billions by coming here on an annual basis. But successive governments, Labour included, did not use that money to level up the infrastructure versus number of people who are using that infrastructure. And then we ended up in a situation where there was no money left after Labour, so the Conservatives had to bring in austerity. So there has been a failure for 20, 25 years of catching up with infrastructure versus population. how the solution is therefore to cut taxes, therefore have less government revenue, so you can't invest in that infrastructure now. Surely we should be investing more. Like you're saying, there's still a huge imbalance. I, I, but I, I, ideologically, I'm not sure I feel that that's particularly I, I fair. There's a strong argument, actually, to go for growth in 2010. Austerity was an ideological choice and it was a mistake. Mm. We really should have actually spent more money and the economy would have benefited from that. But, the very, but uh, it became fashionable to blame Labour for a global recession yeah. and then to say, oh, well, now we've got to cut back because the Conservatives like doing that. And it's as simple as that. But Labour deregulated the banks further than the Tories ever did, and dur what during those and good now the times? Conservatives are undoing. No, but during those good times, which there were brilliant but times, Labour were well, the debts under Labour were, were hugely high as well. It was it one point, in America. There was one point they were running a surplus before the global recession, which everybody seems to forget, which is unheard of. The other thing is, it's a bit tro 
dystopia it is to sort of be like, well, you know, the, the, the satisfaction levels in the NHS were off the scale and the value for money we were getting per head, per person in this country was, was incredible. And it has been run down and decimated specifically by the Tories, which was a choice. And, uh, you know, for what it's worth, I obviously was, well, anybody who knows, was, I was passionately against Brexit and really wanted to remain, etc. But at least that was down to, that was up to people. That was democracy in action. Austerity, I think it was worse because it was put upon this country, um, you know, and, and, and now look where we are. And so this idea about the Conservative Party, I think what's interesting is, yeah, we've got trust, but we've had Johnson, but it goes right back. And I think it's all that history that might mean that they're done. Could I just say, though, that the very agencies, the very um, uh, sort of banking institutions, IMF, all of those things that are now criticising what Liz Truss was doing, they were praising the UK for cutting back on its spending during the global recession. That our credit rating um, uh, uh, didn't it get better on, after the IMF. Christine Lagarde, was she IMF, said, actually, look, you know, I dread to think what the UK would be like if it wasn't cutting its public spending in the way that it was. But you've got to look at where we were starting from. We have, we have the most, we have the, pretty much the most regionally unequal country in, in, in Europe. And as a result, we had the people that were the most left behind when we got to 2016 who were simply not okay. And so, yes, you could, even if you want to argue that, um, we needed to reduce our spending, not in those areas that desperately needed more. Uh, we just made, we created that we hit, we, made, we made the problem even worse because of what mm. we did. And as your point about immigration, well, the, the numbers speak for themselves in terms, of, in terms of public services. We know that EU citizens made up five percent of the population and ten percent of our doctors. So immigration was mathematically keeping the country alive and keeping the NHS going. As for the benefits, as you say, as say yourself, it's the responsibility of the government to make sure that the benefits of immigration are spread equally across the country. And who's been in power for most of the last um, um, two decades? The Tories. Yeah. Mm. But also, also, the other problem is our voting system. You know, it just, it's like a seesaw. We swing from one thing to, it's too short term. You know, we really need wholesale um, voter reform and constitutional yeah. change. Yeah. We I really think. need that. I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think the Brexit vote in many ways was voting for, for, for change. For change, yeah. And everyone I speak to loves the thought of, of getting a new voting system. So, so that your vote matters and it counts. Mm. And that's so important to get through. So, but at the moment, it's a two horse race still because we're it still is. entrenched in the system that we have. Um, the Labour Party are way ahead in the polls. Now, I'm actually someone that's not going, oh, yay, too much because I'll believe it when I see it. And I think the one thing I think you've touched on, Sam, the Tories are pretty amazing at turning things around just when you think. And two years, if we don't have an election, I mean, let's get our mystic Meg crystal balls out here. <laughs> as much as one can when at the moment, two weeks, so much happens. You know, they could, they could decide, OK, we're going to look like a joke if we have another leadership contest. But if, out, if we're going to lose our jobs at an election, we might as well give it a go and get her out. Um, and then if they installed a Penny Mordaunt type or a sort of Tom Dunham, I wouldn't be surprised if they won again. Ah! I don't know. When well, you look at uh, the MPs, the Tory MPs and how they voted, they didn't vote for Liz Truss. No. They didn't actually want her in. And you could imagine if another leadership election took place that they try and remove the members from the equation altogether. Because you said the Conservative Party is ruthless, but I think its membership is quite ideological now. Mm. And that is filtering through slowly to the Parliamentary Party. You're getting more sort of avid pro-Brexiteers, more culture warriors, but they're very much concentrated currently in the membership. Um, so I think, yeah, I think they might just install someone who they fancy. And mm. Michael goes going for it hard. Do you, is he? I thought he was going off to do something else. Anyway, um, <laughs> we'll watch this space. Oh, and Femi, they're best friends now. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who missed Femi's interview with Michael Gove, look it up. It was uh, Femi sort of chasing him down the road. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Um, so, and the Labour Party, are they doing enough? Are they doing enough? Because they've got this huge lead. Obviously, I think for them, one thing I will say is their conference, the timing was beautiful because at the time, Liz Truss had just tanked the economy, literally. <laughs> and so then by just, you know, contrast, Keir Starmer looked incredibly sane and the conference ran smoothly and they offered some policy for the first time. We sort of got to hear a bit about what they were going to do and some, some great ideas. But are, are they being too timid still? Are they just sort of constantly trying to abide by the people that might vote Conservative? What do you think? 
So if the election happened today, they'd win. A landslide, that's all, all the polls show. If it happens in two years' time, I know anybody's guess because uh, it's very easy for, the, for people to forget all the damage that's been done mm. now. Um, and Labour, yes, in the conference we got Great British Energy, the new energy company that's going to basically drive us towards renew renewable energy. But as far as the ideology of the Labour Party, there isn't much. And what they're trying to do, in fact, he even said the phrase on climate change, on Brexit, on a whole bunch of issues, we are the party of the centre ground. So essentially the party of general neutrality. Mm. And that's not particularly inspiring. And that's why they need to start saying things like, all right, we recognise um, the majority voted for Brexit in 2016. They wanted X, Y, Z. Has it delivered X, Y, Z? No. I went and spoke to this farmer, this fisherman, this small business owner. This is what they've said that has happened as a result of Brexit. This is what they've told me that they need. Take out the words like single market, take out the words like remain, leave, blah, blah, blah. Just practically, what do people need as a result of the damage that Brexit, that Brexit and the Tories have done? That sort of thing. And especially on proportional representation, because if if the next election isn't going to be for two years, people are going to forget the damage that was done in the last few weeks by, the, by Liz Truss. And if that happens, you're going to have the same problem you had in 2019 with Labour, Lib Dems, Greens, all presenting different alternatives to the Conservative Party, but competing against each other. Mm. And as a result, they, they will end up with a situation where the Tories manage to get a majority of the seats in Parliament, even though only a minority actually vote for them. The best way to avoid competition between those parties is to say, hey, if you vote for us, then in all future elections, your votes will count just as much as mine. Yeah, yeah. And what do you do in the meantime about the swathes of people who are completely and utterly apathetic? That's the thing that makes me sad. I mean, we're obviously completely engaged and absorbed in this crazy world of politics, but like me, you'll all be talking to people, go and get your hair done or go to the shops or meet people in a taxi, whatever, who just are switched off. Liz, I'll put that to you because obviously you are, you know, you campaign and you campaign for the Lib Dems and everything. How do you get through to people who are just all politicians are the same? They're all a nightmare. Um, it is hard, but it's not as hard now as it was with Brexit. Mm. But when Brexit was still a sort of a hopeful thing, uh, it was very difficult to penetrate through that hope and the project fear. And, and, and now that project fear is here and worse, um, it is much easier to sort of say, well, this has happened. And the answer is, uh, you know, as I said, the voter reform thing is, is people are very um, happy with, as mm. well as actually giving people more power in local you know, de decentralising Whitehall is too much control from the centre. People need control in their own constituencies. You know, as we've seen with the river chaos and the sewage, you know, it's a horrible situation for people to be living with this sewage situation. And we've got sort of like, well, you've got to live with it. Thames water recently, you know, oh, there was oh, a, yeah. a leak in Oxford and people had no water for days. Um, and so it's actually not feeling, who do you ring? Where do you get control? And it is actually what we need is more... Um, power given to our local, you know, to our county councils and giving them proper responsibility for the budget so it's yeah. rolled out and services, people want good, good public services. They do. It's as simple as that. So we need to be kinder and we need to be fairer and we need to be more pragmatic and we definitely need to do something about um, hopefully thinking about having another Leveson, you know, finishing the Leveson inquiry to make our press kinder. Yeah, that would be a good start. Now, Christo, as a, a conservative and um, you know, ideologically conservative, ideologically conservative, yeah, and I completely I didn't, appreciate I didn't that. Vote conservative in the last election. I, I did not vote for Boris yeah. Johnson. Yeah. I, I, I didn't believe a word that came out of his mouth. And, yeah. and in fairness to my talk TV audience. A lot of them that gave me abuse at the time for being anti-Boris have come to me since, messaging me, saying, you were right all along. Right, he yeah. was a charlatan and a completely dishonest buffoon. I'm quite excited by politics at the moment because at least there's clear ground between the two main parties. There hasn't been that for a while because Boris is a remaining socialist. Let's not forget that as well. <laughs> he never believed in Brexit at all, but he did that morning when he knew it would get him into power. Um, not that I particularly believe in Brexit, but we are where we are. I do... I am not convinced by the Labour Party still. Mm. I think that you are absolutely right to say that in two years' time, both of you, all of you that have said this, that, that, that the Conservatives could pull it back, especially if they manage to get past this economic chaos and actually make the economy grow. That's always been the 
clear fighting ground for the Conservative Party. I don't believe Labour are as, are as united as they say they are. They're all smiling sweetly and presenting this sort of like united middle ground party at the moment. They're not that in the slightest, though they did have a very good conference. That's because you wish that they weren't. No, they're not. They're not. They're not in the slightest. Do you no, think the left of the party... More united is, than they've been in well, a long oh, well, time. Great. Well, the, 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 we're talking about a low bar. That was a low bar. Um, I don't believe that great British energy, I think that's a complete pie in the sky. The renewables that the technology isn't even invented for yet, they're already writing checks for, doesn't make any sense. And I also think about my local Labour Council. You talk about decentralisation. My local Labour Council has held consultations right, left and centre on various local issues, which they just ignore and plough ahead with them anyway. You know, it's, it interests me so much, Christo, because... What is it that the Conservatives have done for you? Like, what is the legacy? You've got shit in the rivers, you've got turd in the waterways, you've got hampered growth because of the barriers that have been put in. We've got no well, services. Well, at the moment, I'll grow through to interrupt. Up, police are cut, education is on its knees, NHS is on its knees, labour shortages, corruption, cronyism... Um, sort of scandals. I'd like, what is it you like about well, them? Well, firstly, I'll, I'll repeat again, I didn't vote for them in the last election, but <laughs> um, for, like, uh, uh, Labour have never in their history handed back an economy yeah, to the Conservative just, uh, Party. Don't, don't, don't ignore all the stuff I've just said. What is good well, about Labour? Uh, there's a potential, there, there is How a is good Labour argument. who haven't been in worse than what I've just said? Well, there is always an argument to say that a party that has been in power too long, and that's perhaps the most compelling argument as to why people will vote them out, they start to eat themselves up, they start to not care. I think the scandals about parties were absolutely awful. But the low-tax Conservative ideology is something that my family, my dad, coming over from Greece as someone with who wasn't very well educated, starting a business under Thatcher with yeah. regulations being rolled back. My parents are small business owners under Blair and, and Brown as well. Um, things weren't always better for people in that situation. And I'm sorry, I return to Labour on a local level, I return to Sadiq Khan in London, who I think has been a complete disaster, who seem to think that voters are cash cows. Sorry, I, I don't. I would Sad, ideologically, I'm anti-Labour for those reasons. Well, I think, I think talking about personal. Back... Likes poo in the water. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was the that. big benefit I forgot to talk about. <laughs> can ride it out of the country. Um, talking about talking about personal backgrounds. I mean, I think my family's experience of Thatcherism was was quite different, and particularly the area that I that I grew up. You know, um, former uh, industrial town. Um, not that Brexity, but certainly neighbouring Brexity areas. And Thatcher decimated those areas, cut back um, on industries. I think the thing with Thatcher was that it wasn't just that um, she wrecked many traditional industries, it's that she didn't replace those industries with anything. I, I actually completely agree with that. She ruled for the people who voted for her and she forgot the fundamental rule, which was actually then once you've brought in your radical agenda, you have to then take the people who didn't vote for you with you. And she didn't do that. This, this is the problem with the free market, is that her idea was that these industries that weren't performing economically, once you liberated them from the constraints of, you know, government subsidies, that the market would then rush into these areas and create something new. And it never did. Yeah. It was only free in the sense that it didn't offer anything to these areas. And, and that's this is why exactly those towns this... are left behind now. And exactly. And this is why we, you know, this is why we had Brexit. And Liz Truss is, is you know, is just re trying to replicate that sort of ideology again. And what we're going to see is London, which is already overheated, um, heating up even, even more, mm. while those areas are offered with what? With free ports with deregulation. They're basically offshore tax havens. Um, investment zones. Investment yeah. zones. You know, how's yeah, that, that going to work? Where has it been you, tried before? What do you want then? I mean, that is an idea that is going to try and rejuvenate some of those very places that you have spoken about by removing some of the burdens on businesses that could therefore start to invest in that area. So, uh, with respect, you're unhappy when those areas are left behind. When an idea is presented that might rejuvenate some of those areas, you're not happy either. But, well, because uh, for me, it's about just 
<laughs> okay, so all the Shore Start centres have gone, right? So you, the kids have got no help, no support. You've got no social services. You've got no mental health services. You've got nothing for, to cradle people who don't start out with very much. And I always think... All of us, all of us, including myself, are maybe two or three things happening to you in your life and you might need that help. You can come from a very privileged position like I do and I'd probably be all right because I've got good family around me, right? But just, you just don't know. And that's what they just took away with no regard. Like when Theresa May was told, don't cut the police, it will lead to more crime. And she just did it. I mean, the, it, to me, that's monstrous. And so now they're having to recruit and all the experience has gone and crime is up and there's nobody. Everyone goes, oh, there's no bobbies on the street. Yeah, no, there aren't. And then that, and so actually what you end up doing is putting more strain on the country because those people who just aren't helped end up putting, needing more resources. So it's endless. So that is where I think Labour are speaking my language more. Can, you I, know? can I interject, Joe? Sorry. So what I want is, and I'll use an analogy. So I come from Huddersfield and Huddersfield is not too far away from Sheffield. Uh, you could probably drive there in less than an hour on a good day. On the train from Huddersfield to Sheffield, which I was on the line that took you to Sheffield, it would take you about an hour and a quarter. Once an hour, the train arrived, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, it was it was a pacer train that was built during the 20th mm -hmm. century. They're the, the ones that are buses. They're that literally have a bus that stitched trains, onto yeah. train tracks, yeah. Um, but I could get from Wakefield to London in two hours. Creating these investment zones in areas that fundamentally have 20th century technology and infrastructure won't boost productivity, won't boost economic growth. You've got to connect these areas and bring them into the 21st century mm. through government investment, and then you'll see those centres thrive again. I think that just going for the tax cuts method in the hope that we'll get economic growth in these areas is is, is complete yeah, policy. And, and I think it was I think it was Sheffield University that did the calculation that the UK is the most regionally unequal among major economies. And when you look at when you compare us with Europe, they don't all have like they don't their regional redistribution isn't based on having loads of free ports. It's based on having better infrastructure mm -hmm. across their countries. Yeah. That's what we need: making better uh, trains going east west, better bus services, etc. And that can be done. And it's not it's not good enough to say, well, what do you want? We've given you the free ports. What else do you want? It's also the fact that they actively go against um, uh, those areas. Remember when we had the we had the furlough issue with 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 the mayor of Manchester desperately begging Boris Johnson to get to give furlough to Manchester when Manchester was going into tier two. He wouldn't do it until until uh, London went into 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 uh, into, um, in, into tier two. Then we had the issue with the A level algorithm, which was specifically designed oh. to give the best grade, take the best grades from private from state schools and give them to private schools. We had the decision to not give free school meals to the poor, poorest in society. Every decision that they make is always is about keeping the people who are already at the bottom further down. Yeah. You won't get an argument with me over the moronic decisions from the Randy buffoon. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely uh, will not. And actually, where I, I, I do agree with you on transport, I, I think that, that some of the opposition to structure, uh, structural projects like HS2 is wrong because we need those for capacity. The fact that, that there is, uh, you know, decisions made about it not being extended all the way up to the, the, the areas that need it is, is moronic to me. Because to me, that way, that, it? that, absolutely, that way. that's the point the of thing it. to remember, the reason that our railways are actually in such poor shape and um, the you know the public system is because the conservatives in, you know put us through the beaching cuts we had a world beating railway system and if only they'd invested in it we wouldn't have this gridlocked car situation and and poor roads well it, uh, just just to say the one thing that i the one nationalization that um, I've always said that I was in favour of and that I don't, I've never understood the privatisation of the railways. Never, because not only are you subsidising private rail companies, so therefore you're, 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 you're but, but, but you cannot have true competition when there's one set of mm. railway lines. So I've never, I've never understood but that. They wrecked, the infrastructure is so important. They wrecked the whole network. You know, we had an extensive network everywhere and they just sold it all off yeah you know and, and in fact my uh, sister's got my sister and brother-in-law have got a, a house down the south coast which has got some of those railway car carriages as bedrooms because they <laughs> they literally just oh, every just blew it all up and brexit <laughs> is so similar to the be beach and cuts in many ways we're like oh we're a bit bored of the way britain is that's so we'll, <laughs> we'll just change it all radically yeah. and and yeah there is no concern for the disruption and they haven't been honest about what brexit meant and now suddenly it's like we're going to join a trade bloc in Asia, which actually comes with a lot of 
um, concessions from our, our point, and they haven't communicated it to the country. Oh. And they go, we won't join the single market, but we'll go and join CPTPP. Oh, the, the most baffling one is the Indian trade deal, uh, which yeah. they're determined to get it signed before Diwali. And who's in the power position there? I mean, India is obviously anyway, because India is such a bigger economy. Yeah. But the fact that they know that we're trying to rush for a trade deal with this country just for PR, that epitomises, I think, the approach of the Conservatives over the past 12 years. It's sort of painting a facade over all of the deep structural problems um, for, a, for a poll boost. So, and yeah, none of it is joined up because then obviously she'll do a quid pro quo on migration and that was the whole thing about Brexit and now for growth she needs more labour so it's going back on itself. And I think personally the trouble with all of this is why are you in politics? If you're not in politics to affect change and to do good, like somebody like Andy Burnham, who you hear him and you think, oh God, please, he's refreshing, he's so decent. Um, but if you're there for your own career, and for your own glory and to wear a stupid uh, shirt with a bow so you can look like Budget Thatcher <laughs> and Margarine Truss. With, with... And, you know, also the other thing is that all the Conservatives have got at the moment is talking about Thatcher. It's doing my head in. We've even done it tonight. I well, tuned in into the... Cons... Where she's right is you do have to pay for a lot of these ideas. <laughs> it was a long time ago and things were very different. And, you know, they talk about her tax cuts and I think, I, I think that she was cutting from 70%, 75%, 80% tax. We're not there now. And also she planned everything very strategically and sort of let everybody know what she was and doing. she did respect she the did. law, in fairness to her. Yeah, and she did it sort of legally and, and, and with everybody knowing what was going on, right? And so sort of different time, different person, different era. I'm tuned into the uh, Conservative uh, uh, conference the other day and it was just a load of men standing around going, oh, Thatcher, oh, Thatcher, oh, Thatcher, oh, Thatcher, Thatcher, Thatcher. And I was just like, wow, please, can we just talk about the planet or or infrastructure or can we be progressive? But also, the Blair, ah. the Blair years, actually, I remember, you know, I grew up in South Wales, so I experienced Thatcher hard, you know, mining community and steelworks near me. And um, it was it was awful. A lot of my friends were on the... They never came off the dock. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, so in the Blair years, there was this feeling of, you know, suddenly people have money in their pockets, economy, the economy was moving, people were going to pop festivals and, you know, things moved on, museums were free. And it feels as though all of that has actually Nursery been places came in, so, you know, child tax credits. We like, there were things that were all borrowed, though. Well, who cares? Do you know what? You don't go to bed and go, oh, the deficit. But where's no, the no, money coming we were from borrowing now? It. We were borrowing it. It's the multiplier effect. We were which borrowing which it. You have money in the economy, could, it generates more money, more money, money and then you deficit. get more money back. You get a mortgage by writing the a letter. Deficit. You could get credit cards coming out of your ears the under Labour. It's so much bigger now. It's massive now. It's like way, way, way and bigger. And it was before COVID. There is so much rubbish up out to there. the magic money tree to pay the fossil fuel giants. Yeah, you know, brilliant. She's just, she's just opened a blank Well, check. I'm sorry, we don't have the infrastructure or um, the actual technology to run an entire grid on renewables yet. No, People don't see it. Wouldn't it be this. really good it's for growth if you invest in a windfall in tax on the energy companies? They've even said they're up for it, but she's ideologically opposed well, to it. I, I'm, so I'm, actually, again, we are that. all having to pay for that. And so we're looking at massive, massive austerity on top of again, austerity. Again. Because she's like, I'm ideologically opposed to actually making these huge giants who are profiteering at the moment pay for us to be able to heat our homes and, then it's really and oil our kettle. Have a look at who her donors were for her leadership. Yeah. They, they, but but in, well, in, in fairness, they would, they would <laughs> argue that the renewables and the green infrastructure that they're investing in would suffer if they had to pay for a windfall tax. Because it wouldn't, they, she panels. wouldn't decide they, where the money would come from. No, they did not say that, Christo. They said they would still invest. Yes, actually, they, they well, they would they invest, invest to exactly the same they level? Said, they said their investments over the next. I think it was BP. I think uh, BP said that their investments over the next eight years would not change if there was a windfall tax. Yeah. And, and, and that the main thing that would would affect it is if it, those taxes were unpredictable. I.e., as long as you don't increase prices like you've seen over the last few months, you won't have an extra tax. And uh, by the way, th you know, and I've, I've said it on other forums, I, I, I've changed my view on a windfall tax for energy companies. I think it was misjudged. You're basically you know, Labour, Chris. No, I'm not Labour. I am. <laughs> you just love that <laughs> Labour. I <laughs> Labour. I am not convinced by Labour. They still haven't. I mean, if we're going You're back, still up for corruption, cronyism, <laughs> like sewage in the waterway. in the Labour Party. I mean, no much, levelling up. How much money from the Chinese government went to a, a certain Labour Party MP that they didn't know about it? 
Uh, how many, again, I'll go back to the, the uh, consultations and uh, etc. being ignored. Taxes, I'm sorry, look at London. We've got the ULES, but, we've but, got but, money. But, but here's, here's, here's the thing. Often when you criticise the Tories, the, the immediate answer is, but Labour. But that, that dichotomy is, is dead now. That's the choice. That, 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 That's the that, choice. No, no, no. 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 Because, because now that the majority of Labour and the official position of Labour Party members is we want a proportional voting system, that means that what Labour actually wants is a system where no one party has absolute control. Whereas if you're supporting the Tories, you do want them to have absolute control, despite the fact that they're clearly corrupt. I will believe proportional representation when I see it. Well, it's the same as the Great British Energy, pie in the sky. They won't bring that in. The, uh, the other big argument in. is, well, been, we, you know, we sorry. have had proportional representation actually for the police and crime commissioner elections and the mayoral elections, and they've worked brilliantly. Turkeys don't. But the Conservatives are repealing it and yep. going back to first past the post <laughs> because they want to be assured of winning more of the seats. So, uh, well, do you not think Labour would do the same when they? No. they, they were, of course they Labour would. Labour brought in PR for those posts. So, no, I don't believe... And when the PCCs came in, it was the Lib Dems who insisted on... There is... A, uh, again, you know, in answer to your question, um, I think the Tories can turn it around in the next two years and Labour have not made me an offering yet that wow. would make me change I mean, my mind. Like, also, the other argument was... Well, not saying I vote Tory either. <laughs> the Conservatives are really fiscally responsible. <laughs> She's just tanked. Our economy, <laughs> the Bank of England policies. are having to go back in again. The IMF are absolutely aghast. We look like Venezuela or something. They've had to come in and interfere. And she's basically wasted, which I think actually is criminal. And I think there's a case for her and Quasi Quartin going to prison because they didn't get the OBR to check their stupid which event. Is stupid. And they have lost... Like, what would be the equivalent to the nation's entire education budget? So forget school dinners. Like, it's disgusting when people are struggling out there to waste You're that going much to money. Send them to I'm going to put them in the Tower of London. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Because I think that's fair. <laughs> Misconduct in, pu in public office is a crime. Yeah. If, if you cause this much damage due to this level of recklessness, this is yeah. what we are talking about criminal. No, but it's, it, it, it's incompetence. It, it was, it, it was not, not competent. No, 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 no. I think they got a bit trigger happy. So, so, so much of, of what the Tories do is down to, oh, incompetence, so we didn't, we didn't know. No, they know. They, they know. They have the experts. They have the civil service. They deliberately wanted to crash the economy to make themselves... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We sorry, don't sorry. know, because he had his lunches. It's all reported out there on public forum, allegedly, yeah, allegedly, but Crispin from that. Odie... And then yeah. after she crashed the economy that she wanted to be a disruptor. She said that <laughs> after it. But she also said she'd learned lessons, and that's another thing she's not being given Let's be really, really clear. That's another thing she's not being given Credit the, for. the notion that the government wouldn't intentionally hurt this country died in 2018 when their own experts told them that any version of Brexit they negotiated would make us financially poor. So they have been trying to hurt this well, economy. They should have done country. that in 2014. Would frankly, you but... would you buy a house, especially an old house, without doing a survey on it? And that's effectively what they did. Mm. You know, they didn't. They didn't. I use... bought. I bought my house without doing a survey on it. <sighs> Yeah, and they've, that's I did. The other I thing. bought my house without doing a survey. They've tangibly made well, your mortgage. Um, if your mortgage, I did my mortgage they wouldn't survey, let you do it. I, didn't do it. I knew it was in a terrible state anyway, and I was going to buy it anyway, so I bought it. Yeah. Oh, the thing is, if I look, sure left here, it? I bought. I bought flats without seeing them. I've rung up and bought them. But we know, we, if, if I went up on our way out and I just grabbed one of those computers and stuffed it in my bag, you know, it's theft. She's, she's, she's theft. It's theft. It's our money in that treasury. I, I, I think you've lost the plot. I mean, I say this with love, but I think you've lost the plot. I think the day they stood up and did that to the economy, they lost the plot. And I think that's fair. I, I, I think... I, I mean, we, it was we, 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 I, I mean, what can I say? It's you know? And it will affect me personally <laughs> and it will affect everybody I know. Maybe, maybe this is a, a wider point, but I think we do have a, a poor understanding of the notion of morality when it comes to politics. Because if somebody is, like, literally starving at min minimum wage, at utter poverty, and... And 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 can't and can't feed their kids, and they steal a loaf of bread, or they, or they steal something from the supermarket. Does that does that person deserve to go to jail more than mm. what the Tories have done to this economy and what they've done to the millions of people across the country who they've shoved into poverty, into poverty, knowing that it would happen? I mean, so we're still on jail. For yeah, we the are. Tories. But you know, we're maybe still on jail. For maybe the Tories. this is our good point to like wrap it up, and we go to the questions. I think your question, sorry, I think your question should be: Should the, like <laughs> clearly your question <laughs> is: <laughs> Should okay. the Tories all go to jail? No, not all of them. <laughs> But do we think that that pretty much amounts to criminal negligence? I, am I being completely mad? No, I, I'm, I, 
I think, I think if you just add up the level of damage that they've done to the country, specifically against the advice of the best available experts, because I mean, like um, Kwasi Kwarteng, I think, he, I think he studied English Lit, um, uh, uh, Boris Johnson studied Greek poetry. These people aren't experts in their field. The people who they rely on for their expertise have told them that their actions would damage the lives of millions of people, yet they still chose to do it. That's mm. intentional harm of millions yet, of people. Yet how odd the party that you're all lauding at the moment also wouldn't reverse that. Again, Labour is an anti-Brexit. Again, well, again. That's a good point. Again, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but they, but, but having so said bad. that, Labour just don't want to talk about yeah, Brexit. Yeah, they're just, they just can't. Because can they? heaven forbid they want to actually draw a line under it and fulfil the mandate that the people gave them. Now, yeah, whether we agree with it or not, that's where I, we are. I saw, yeah. I saw an article this morning which actually said Brexit is like um, America with prohibition in the 1920s. And I think that's a really good analogy, actually. You know, we've got all major parties terrified to talk about it because it's been so divisive. But really, you know, they, we are in a situation now where people are understanding. We all agree we need growth. And the quickest way to get growth is by getting back in the single market. And, and that time, as Tobias, and he's a Conservative, or he was, Tobias Elwood said, we need to get back in the single market. It's, mm. It is an instant relief um, and release from the pain that we're in. Yeah. Italy and Germany's predictions for next year's growth are lower than ours. That, 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 that's, that's not an argument. Just because <laughs> we, we we have seen, we know the math that says that our position is currently lower than it would have been had we not left the EU. The fact that there are countries in the EU that are suffering does not prove that our decision to go further down is a, is the correct one. Well, but, but we are where we are. I mean, look, again, you and I have been on air many times before mm. and agreed on the concept mm. of us leaving the EU not being a great decision, but we, we, we can't go back. Why? Because why? we're talking about the undermining of, and of, that's of politics why Labour now. Aren't imagine talking we, about we it. yeah, imagine we we said to people the once in a lifetime referendum in 2016. No, you're, we're you're, going to tell you that you can't. That, sorry, sorry. So let, 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 let's, 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 be, let's be real. Let's be Being real. in the single market in the customs union is still Brexit. Not we're not going mind. back. No, no, I know that, and I know true. that they were promised that. I feel like we're no, arguing no, on the same side. Let's be clear. A start the general principle that a decision made in 2016 somehow dooms every future generation to poverty is not is not okay too as as for with this being somehow the will of the people in 2016 ask the dup is this is this their will are they happy or did they literally shut down the northern irish government specifically because it's not their will and they are part of 52 percent they were promised uh, uh, they were promised uh, 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 ask, ask, ask the brexit party one of whom the, the ME, uh, one of the meps i think is named um, ben ben um the ME brexit well, party ben, 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 ben yeah he's literally trying to go to the supreme court to specifically get them to say that, that this brexit is worth than, worse than being in the eu the, arg the argument that this Brexit is the will of the people anymore yeah, died see, years yeah. ago. But unfortunately, I'm sorry I will keep saying this, what, I, I'm not saying there should never be another referendum. Maybe one day there should be. But unfortunately, we need to let this run its course because it's been... Okay. Until, okay. until we okay. find okay. out if it's bad. OK, I'm going to bring it back <laughs> from so. the B word. Go, go, and go, go, I'm going to go. go back to just a very quick sum up, yes or no, at the next election. Is it going to be Conservatives or are they over? They're not over, no. Not over, no. They're not going to win the next election, no. Good, I hope so. I don't think they'll win. You don't think they'll win? They won't win, definitely not. And there you go. Well, what do you think? Gosh, right, that is actually all we've got time for tonight. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> and did anybody change your mind? Did anybody leave you outraged? Let us know in the comments or even better yet, you could become a member and then you can tell us all yourself. All you need to do is go to byline.tv forward slash join and use the code THE TABLE, all capitals, to get your first month for just £2. And then you can join us back here, literally in a couple of minutes, for the table after dark. Oh, gosh, misses in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> we'll see you there. Good night. Thanks for watching. <laughs>